All right. So today, welcome everybody. We are going to be talking about six steps for finding your next ideal podcast guest without wasting time. Beyond that, I should have also said like booking, prepping, and some other bonuses that you didn't even know you're going to get. So we're going to dive into all that today. I hope you're all excited to be here. I'm really excited to talk about this today because this is one of the things that's really continuously bothered me in podcasting. And when I say bothered me, I just realized there's so much work that goes into it. And it's also the landscape is evolving. So the first thing I'm going to mention here is I'm going to share from a place of love. I might sound a little bit harsh with a couple things. I do not mean to. And some people will say, Alex, when you say you sound harsh, you still sound really nice. So I hope that that's the case today. But I want to give that disclaimer because I really want to make sure that this is shared from a place that we can all really, we can understand and we can, we can act from, right? Uh, because it's it's really important we start getting this get this right or start getting this right if we haven't already or just to to level up a little bit. So the first thing I want to mention here is if you're looking for continued education when it comes to this stuff, I'm about to copy a link here and drop it to everybody. Um, well, before I do, that, I think I got a I got a fancy poll here, uh, and the question is for anyone who's joining like on a replay: Do you listen to podcasting made simple? This is my podcast, so I just threw the poll up there. So let me know if this is a show that you're listening to. Uh, no one has answered it yet. There we go. All right, they're starting to roll in. So. Cool. Sometimes no. All right, I'm going to drop a link to the show. Mostly no. Interesting. Okay. Uh, here's a link to it, podpros.com slash episodes. I'm sharing that specifically because I'm not going to dive into a lot of – this is about finding guests and knowing that they're ideal, how to not waste time. It's not about to be, how to become a better host today, but there are some episodes with people, not, not even me, that have shared some amazing information on how to become a better host, how to continuously level up for your listeners – I highly, highly recommend it. I know it's my show, but if you've not heard it and you go listen to it, I'm not on most episodes. You got me for about, what is it, 14 seconds in the intro and the rest is somebody else who is much smarter than me sharing on a topic. So I encourage you, if you've not checked that out and you're also saying, okay, sure, I want to save time. I want to find the right guest, but I also want to level up as a host. I encourage you to go check that out. Go check that out. There's some, again, some really important stuff there. So again, to kind of go back to like this, this idea and then I'll drive into the, the six points I'm going to share. But the first thing I want to make sure everyone is aware of, like, this is really important. Like, it is really important that we get it right with guests because, and we bring on the right ones because everyone, who, who has had a bad guest before? Has anyone ever had a bad podcast guest? You don't need to say their name. Just in the chat, let me know if you've ever had a bad podcast guest. Okay. Yeah. I've had a few of them. It's a lot of work. It's stressful. It sucks. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like, it's just a bad experience overall. And I don't know about you, but like, man, that bothered, like, last night a bad guest, it bothered me for, for like, almost a full week. I'm like, man, I need to like get better at this. And so over the years, I've intentionally figured out how to improve in this area. And that's what I want to talk about. The, the second kind of main thing I want to share here is there's a lot of people pouring in to podcast guesting more than are pouring into becoming a podcaster. Actually, I, I looked today and there are just, there's still under like 410,000 active podcasts right now, 410,000. Not 410, 410,000. So 400,000 active podcasts, give or take, right, is what we're looking at. There are over, I don't even know the number, but last time I checked, it was about six months ago. There's over 12 million people actively looking to be guests on podcast. And that number continues to climb because people are seeing the value of it. But here's, here's my dilemma with that is when people are seeing the value of it, it's attracting the wrong people to it. And the wrong people often have a lot bigger budget than the person with the right mindset, right? People have this intent of like, we can get even richer doing this. So let's just blast ourselves out there. Let's grow our social following so we look more attractive. But here's the thing, they might not be good guests. And I want to make sure that we don't lose the culture of podcasting, which is one human adding value to another. Or sometimes two humans, if it's an interview, right? Adding value to that listener. And I don't want it to turn into these big names, big people only, people with big budgets, all this that are getting out there and just sharing the agenda they have to share to make up for the money they're spending with it. And I'll dive into that a little bit, but it's really important that we have the right guest first and foremost. And it's up to us as host, the gatekeeper, to protect our audience from hearing bad information, right? We want it to stay on point. We want it to stay on message. And that's my heart behind sharing this today. And again, I'll say some things that are unconventional at best. Uh, I'm actually known for sharing the exact opposite of what everyone else in podcasting shares. Uh, as a matter of fact, that was one of the major headlines after PodFest Global. There was like 10 or 15,000 people there. And uh, the, the moderator afterwards, she got on, she goes, you, I don't know what to say. 
you shared exactly the opposite of what everyone's been sharing for a week and a half. And she goes, I don't actually know how to process that. So just so you know, take it all the grain of salt, apply what you agree with, don't apply the rest. But just so you know, I am always in everything completely against the grain. Uh, that's just the way that I am, am wired. And it's worked very well for me. So I, I'm thankful for it. And I encourage you, it might be the right role for you as well. So again, success for finding your next ideal guest without wasting time. Number one, this is the first thing I want everyone to do, design a listener transformation journey. I should have made that easier to say. Design a listener transformation journey. And what this means is everybody is looking for transformation. People aren't looking just for more information. They're looking to transform themselves. Now, you might be like, Alex, I have a comedy podcast. Great. Someone's looking for more laughter in their lives. They want to be a happier person. They want to learn some funnier jokes and be more witty themselves, right? Or you're like, I have a coaching one that's just kind of helping people get better. Well, the transformation there is pretty obvious, right? Or just for fun podcast. Maybe people just want more fun in their lives. People are looking for some sense of transformation. The way that we can ensure this is happening with our podcast is to first and foremost, know your why. If you've heard me speak, it's always the first thing I say. I say start with why, not because of Simon Sinek, because it's what we should do, right? We should start with why. And the next thing you want to do is tie an avatar to that why. And then you want to think about that avatar, which again, just ties back to if your why is to to add more joy to people's lives. Then you create a fictitious character, which is your ideal listener slash avatar. Build them around that and basically set it up so you can say, I'm serving Adam. Like Adam is my avatar's name, right? Adam is who I am serving. And now now I want to say, okay, what's the transformation path going to be to get Adam to my why? To bring more joy to Adam's life. What does that look like? You always want to start with that because the more connected you are to this avatar, and put a, put a picture of your avatar right here, right? I have a buddy who actually had a cartoonist draw up his avatar. I can't remember the name of it, but his avatar and his family, he put it in a frame right next to his computer. And he's like, every time I'm, I'm looking for a guest, I'm producing content, I'm thinking of that person and his family and how is this going to, to serve them and how is it that we're going to be able to add value to him, right? And so I think it's so important, again, design your your – Sorry, the first point again, design a listener transformation journey. Such an important thing. Start with why, build out the avatar. When you do this, it makes these next five points I'm going to share much easier. All right, everybody with me? That was, that was number one there. Looking for some interaction here. I hope you're all taking notes. That's why it's taking a minute to get some interaction. It might just be actually slow. There we go. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> I appreciate it. And Dr. Victoria, I, I got a smiley face. I like that. I know what that means. <laughs> um, all right, so number two is to create and maintain an episode topic list. Number two, create and maintain an episode topic list. Notice I didn't say a list of ideal guests because many of us, myself included, I beat myself up with this ideal list of names. And those names did not want to be on my podcast. Remember, I started at a previous time. It's funny like how it shifted. Like when I started, if I was pitching to be a guest on a podcast, this is like a total side random. I'm going to bring it back real quick here. But I'd be like, hey, my name is Alex. I'm like, shut up right now. You have to come on my podcast as a guest. And I'd be like, that's what I was asking for. I don't care. Get on my show. I need you, right? It comes out tomorrow, right? And so when I first started, I was like pitching people to be a guest. And I'd be like, take a hike, dude. A podcast? Who wants to do that? There's no value in it. It's dead, right? And now we all know that's, that's false. But back then, especially, having that list of ideal guests was impossible to get. But I realized something in that, in that whole interaction. It wasn't actually valuable. A lot of us build up this list of ideal guest names instead of topics that matter to our listeners because we have a little bit of an ego in it. We think, oh, to bring more listenership, I've had the bigger names on. I've actually found the opposite to be true. For a while, I did pursue early on the big names in podcasting, and occasionally I'll still have them on if they are absolutely the ideal fit for the topic I have listed. Again, not the person, but the topic I've listed. But always, those are usually my least engaged with podcast episodes, or they're my most engaged podcast li- uh, episodes because they have so many fans. Those fans show up, so you get this spike, which actually totally ruins your podcast data. So it's like, what's the point of that? Um, it's just not, it's not healthy. As a matter of fact, I had somebody on my show, and he's coming back on because he's actually a good guest, and he's got, he has a, a, for lack of a better term, he has a cult following. I mean, absolutely a cult following of tens of millions of people. And he's like, hey, man, I don't usually do this. He's like, but I like this interview so much. We've already recorded. He goes, I'm going to share it with everybody. And I was like, actually, I prefer that you don't. He's like, what? I was like, I don't want you to share it. I'm like, that's going to skew my data. Like, I, your cult following is going to listen to your one episode, destroy my data, and then leave. They're not coming back. I'm like, I prefer that you – I'm like, if you really want to, you can, but I'm not going to give you anything. And I'm like, I'll tell you when it's out, but that's all I'm going to do. And he's like, I really respect that. And guess what? He'd come back to my podcast, but he says no to – I think he, he only says yes to two a year. Anyway, um, but the point is – I'm after the topic that he knows. And so we've got to really, again, focus on this topic. 
Now, the reason, again, this matters is, is thinking about what's actually going to add value to the listeners. My top downloaded episodes are all with names of people you would never know because it was such a good conversation on the topic that really mattered. So if you're saying, okay, Alex, like, I don't really know how to, to find the topics, I'll give you two things real quick. Number one is to repeat the ones that work from a data standpoint. So again, looking at the data, like that means engagement, people finishing listening to episodes, like look at the completion rate, look at the, the downloads in the first seven days. Any of those metrics will show you that you hit a topic that your listeners are really interested in. And my favorite one is the outreach I get from it. When I get a bunch of outreach, I'm like, ooh, I need to make sure I go back to that. And that's the point right there is to go back to it. So if you have like this piece of content that works really well, then do an episode like it again. Get a slightly different perspective because the truth is if you just cover one topic one time, it's not going to click with all your listeners. But after three or four times, it might start clicking and causing them to take action. Think about that. Such an important thing. So repeat the important topics. If you were like a blogger or like I, I came from the world of blogging, this is the total opposite of what we did in blogging. We created what was called cornerstone content, which means one piece of content that you just link to continuously, build it bigger, make it bigger. It ranks higher in Google. And that is the ultimate source of something. Podcasting is the opposite. Get it smaller. When you find this list that you're building out of, of 50 ideas and topics, make them smaller. If they liked it, find a way to cut that in half and make it two separate episodes next time. Just continuously make it smaller and smaller. I'm going to drop a link to two resources here. If you're like, I'm really struggling with topic ideas. I've got neilpatel.com slash ubersuggest and trends.google.com slash trends. That is their URL. It's really rough, but trends.google.com slash trends and neilpatel.com slash ubersuggest. If you put in a keyword that has worked for you or that you just knew that people really enjoyed or one that you think is good, and you're like, I don't know how to make more keyword ideas, you drop that in there and it will give you recommended key phrases, other keywords that go with it that people are actually searching for. That's what I like. It's not just a, oh, well, this kind of relates, life coaching kind of relates to spiritual coaching, right? It's not saying that. It's, no, it says people who search for life coaching also search for how to make meaningful change in my life. Now you found another topic. That's something else that you can cover, right? So those two tools right there have helped me a lot to keep this running list of, I, I have over 100 ideas now, like, but I, on a consistent basis, I'm always looking at the ones that matter to people. So this was a really important point because again, we want to think about the topics, not just the guest, because now it makes it easy to find the guests that we're looking for that can cover those topics. Everybody, everybody with me? Does that make sense? I'm seeing a lot of chat here. Alicia, you have to let me know if any questions come up and I'll make sure to answer those. But um, Cool. Deb, thanks for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. All right. So number three here is to get smarter about finding ideal guests. Get smarter about finding ideal guests. I decided to make this part a little bit fun because I have a lot of stuff here. And this is my, where it might get a little, uh, little iffy with what I'm going to share. Sorry, everybody. Um, but you might be a bad podcast guest if, is what the name of this game, if anyone can remember what that's from. You might be a bad podcast guest if, number one, you're always urgent with everything. This is the first thing I want you all to know. And I say, this is like our culture internally with Podmatch, with everything we do. Happy three anniversary Podmatch, right? Like everything we do, we say we have a culture of calm. And the reason for that is because we're in podcasting. And guess what? I checked everywhere. No one has ever died because a podcast episode didn't come out or it came out 10 minutes early or it was longer or shorter than the last one. It's never happened. So when you have a guest who approaches you saying, this has to come out by this date because I have this, I have that, I have this. It's got to, can we do this quicker? Is there anything else we can do? That is an instant red flag that that guest is not, one, not smart, but two, not going to be a good guest because they have a sense of urgency, which means they're going to burn you the second they're done because they're just urgent and they're going to flip to the next person. Be really careful with a sense of urgency. Now you might be like, well, Alex, they're an author, book's coming out. Guess what? That's like saying someone's being born, so we have to like get their whole life together. No, it happens one day at a time afterwards. The best day of your book is, God forbid, the first day of it, right? It should just get better and better over time. As more people read it, you get better testimonials, right? So when someone's saying, like, I got a book launch, I'm like, cool. The best thing you can do is come back in two years when it starts dying off, right? Keep it hot. <laughs> Don't do everything on the first day. But again, the point is a sense of urgency is always a bad guest. And here's why, another reason, is everything we do with podcasting should be evergreen. It's got to be evergreen. If someone's promoting an event that happens in two months, guess what? A podcast listener in two years from now, they, they're not going to listen to that episode. And they're probably just going to leave your podcast because clearly it's outdated, right? You don't want anyone with a sense of urgency. Okay, next one. You might be a bad podcast guest if the host cannot validate that you're actually going to be a good guest. 
if you have any check in your mind about it or they say they're one thing, you get on a pre-call with them, you start talking to them, and you're like, ooh, that's, that doesn't align with what you just told me, right? Or what your bio said or the way you're acting doesn't really uh, resonate with, with who you say you're showing up to be. If you have any check at all, the best thing you can do is pass on them as quickly as possible. Just say no. So if a, if a guest cannot validate that they are who they say they are, that, again, is instant red flag. I don't even need to talk about that one. Everyone, I hope everyone knows that. But just because you even started the process of a yes doesn't mean you have to continue it with a guest. At any point, remember, you, the host, are responsible for your listeners and who actually gets to see them, who gets to talk to them, all that. So you owe it to them to be like, hey, I got a, I got a, I got a red check here, a red flag. This is not going to happen. So keep that one in mind. I'll come back to that whole point toward the end. Uh, next one, you might be a bad podcast guest if you're using a traditional podcast booking agency. This is where it gets a little, little dicey here, right? So watch out. Some of these booking agencies, I know one, the guy does, he'll get you 12 podcast interviews. He charged $35,000 to get you on 12 podcasts. And it's all, he's probably had people on some of your podcasts. So it's not just the, the Joe Rogan podcast of the world, right? It's not the serial podcast. It's like not all the big ones. It's any of them. And some people can afford it. I asked him, like, do you actually have business? He's like, dude, I can't keep people away. He's like, we just keep on raising our prices because people just won't go away. But here's the problem. If I spent $35,000 and let's just say Karen, who's in here, is the first podcast that agency gets me booked on. In my mind, I have to extract $35,000 of value from that single podcast interview. You best believe Karen's questions are not why I'm there. Her audience is not why I'm there. I'm saying, what can I share that is going to get me that $35,000 back as fast as humanly possible? Therefore, I'm not showing up to serve. I'm showing up to, to help myself get my money back. And then the rest can be a bonus, right? And the truth is, nothing against traditional booking agencies, but man, I, I've never, I've had, sorry, I've had one good guest in all of my years from a booking agency. I just tell them no, straight up, it's a no, because your person is only looking to make their money back at this point. You convince them to spend an ungodly amount of money, and now you're putting them in front of me where they're like, cool, this is the sucker that's going to make me my money back. So keep that in mind. If you're getting emails from people that are doing cold outreach, 99.999% of the chance, times, that is not a good guest. So keep that in mind. The other thing is, I wouldn't even consider a booking, uh, using a booking agency or letting them have a guest on my show unless they're going to give me some money, straight up. If they're making five grand by booking that person on my podcast, as a podcast host who does all the work, reaching out to me with a mass email, took no work at all, I would like, I'd like $1,000 of your $5,000. And by the way, that'll help produce the episode. And every agency is going to, they're going to curse you out and say, take a hike, right? Like you don't get money. That's not what you do. You're a podcaster. And that's the mentality they have. And if they have the mentality, just get off their list by saying that, Hey, give me some of that money and I'll look to see if there's a good guest. I have people that I know that are doing that now. So again, you might not be a good guest. You're using a traditional booking agency. All right. And the next one, also a little dicey. Sorry, everybody. I'm sharing this in love. They, you might be a bad podcast guest if you don't invest in yourself. Podmatch. Great service, works for a lot of people. We charge $26 a month if you want to be a guest. Every single day I have somebody cuss me out saying, I can't believe you're charging for this. It's absurd. I, I don't have the money for it. I would never do that. And I understand some people are in that, in that situation. Here's my thought on this. If you're only using the free tools, that tells me you don't believe your message is, is worth any money to you at all. As a matter of fact, most of these people, because most of us have this, have a Netflix and a Hulu account. And I looked at how much those cost. So if you're going to get a Netflix and Hulu account, it's going to cost you just about $28 a month. Podmatch is $26 a month. If you're telling me your message is worth less to you than wasting your life on a couch, then you don't deserve to be a podcast guest. If you're saying, I'm just going to use all the free stuff, I'm just going to do DMs, I'm just going to do that. You're telling me the message you want to share with my audience has zero value to you. You'd rather sit around and waste your life. So I digress on this point, but here's the thing. That is the fact. And I get some people are in rough situations that can't really afford it. I get that. If you live in the U.S. or Canada alone and you tell me you can't make an extra $28 a month or $26 a month, sorry, uh, first off, cancel Netflix and Hulu. Stop going to Starbucks. Ask your neighbor if you can mow their lawn. Take out your neighbor's trash. You can do it. And as a matter of fact, here's a little bonus for you. If you join Podmatch at $26 a month when you can't afford it, but you pick up one of those odd jobs to do it, put that at the very top of your profile. Couldn't afford Podmatch, but my message is so valuable. I want to get to the world. I start taking out my neighbor's trash, and they pay me $26 a month so I could afford this bill. I'm excited to get on here and share my message with the world. I would book you 
every single time because you're telling me you're in a rough situation in life, but your message is so valuable and so needed by the world that you're picking up an odd job that is really humbling for you to get your message out there. That's the guest I want. I don't want the guest who's on DM saying, hey, screw you. Your, ser your service costs money. I'm not doing that. I can do it for free right here. I'm like, cool. Enjoy Netflix later, right? So again, I digress on this point. I'm trying to be here in love. This is a really important message, though, because we've got to start thinking about this. All right. Next one is if you might be a bad podcast guest if you use DMs or cold email outreach. And here's why I say that. Most of them are mass connections. Hey, podcast host, or if they're really savvy, hey, Jody, hey, Scott, loved your latest podcast episode. Really good stuff. Thank you for sharing it. By the way, I would like to be a guest, right? Like we've all seen it. We have a standard response, which I'll share for you in a little bit for those because we've tur I've turned that into – Ex almost exactly $36,000 in three years. And I'll show you exactly how I did that. Um, but it, that's probably a bad podcast guest because they're just trying to reach out the masses. Uh, I don't take any DMs or any emails seriously. Those show me that you're not willing to invest in yourself once again. The last thing I'll share here is you might be a bad podca podcast guest if you use the word I a lot. How many times have you been pitched or talked to somebody with a podcast? Well, I've done this. I've accomplished that. I this. I that. I this. I that. I, 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 I. Don't have somebody who's in it for themselves. That's the first tell. If somebody's saying I a lot, get rid of them. They're, they're not worthwhile because they clearly are, one, not confident at all. It's a, if, if you have to talk, talk about yourself, you have no confidence. Number two, if they're only in it for themselves, they're not there to serve your listener. They're there to get another rep in, and they're going to move on to the next one. Uh, I purposely don't, in any of my emails, if you look at any of my automated emails, the word I is not in the first paragraph. Even if I'm talking about me, I'll just skip the word I. You can still read it without it, but I'm not going to say that. You know, like I don't say I listen to your podcast. I say, hey, so-and-so, just listen to your podcast. Loved it. So good, if I'm being serious, obviously. But I'm not going to say it with I because, again, it's not about me. I listen to your show. It's about you, right? Listen to your show. Okay. So these points, again, write these down. Like these are important. I'll have the replay and stuff like that. But this will make finding a deal guest easier because if they match any of these criteria, don't even entertain it. Don't waste your time. All of us podcast hosts, the reason this is such a stressful thing to do and the reason today when I looked at it, there is a – uh, an 87 and change chance that you're not going to make it to the next year mark of your podcast is because of things like this that we don't even realize are taking up so much of our time. Don't waste it. Okay, next, number four. I hope you're all still with me here. I'm not going to read the comments because people are probably like maybe not happy with some of the things I said. Um, number four, stop the noise, forms, automations, and dripped content. Stop the noise, forms, automations, and dripped content. So, Here's the first thing. This is the bonus today, the dripped content thing. Dripped content simply means all the assets you build for your podcast, all the things you're going to share and stuff like that, right? Statistica, which is a really well-known data company, you can look it up yourself, in the last 13 years reports that social media content specifically has increased by 60%, 60 per, or sorry, 60 times, not 60%, 60 times what it was 13 years ago. But when you look at social media engagement and people using social media, it's actually it's, it's past the point of tapered off and it's starting to drop, which means less people are actually using social media for anything productive. So what that tells me is there's 60 times more competition and less people engaging on it. And that number is growing and shrinking at the same time. And no, no offense to Gary Vee fans. Gary Vee's an interesting character, I suppose, kind of a dinosaur at this point. But uh, Gary Vee's model is just do more. And that works for Gary Vee because you don't know this, but he has literally thousands of people employed just to run his social media. And they just filter through the best of the best. And they have competitions that go on an ongoing basis. Literally thousands of people submitting videos. That's why everything he does is so good. And like, because again, thousands of people. Do you want to be in that game where you're competing, making more content for less engagement? That's a waste of your time. I'm telling you now with drip content, escape the hustle. Here's the solution. Be yourself, be human. Figure out exactly who you serve, figure out where they hang out online, and serve just that one person. Just the one person. As a matter of fact, if you, you know, here's the, the, the fact, the growth rate in podcasting is slower than what I'm about to share with you to do. If you do all the content that Gary Vee is doing, your podcast will grow at a slower rate than reaching out to one person and inviting them to listen to your podcast every day. Because all that content will not get you more than one listener a day. It'll get you maybe one or two a week at most even if you're paying for it. Like it's just not, that does not drive listenership. But if you reach out to one person saying, hey, I saw your post, 
And it was really interesting you brought this thing about mental health. I just talked with a doctor about that. And I thought maybe you'd enjoy this episode. I wanted to share it with you. Doing that one time every day will grow your podcast faster. Guess how long that takes? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You don't have to create any content around it. That's what we do. That's how we've increased our show size by literally 20x in the last two years is just that. No ads. I don't even post about it. Like It's just a waste of my time. So the bonus here is avoid the drip content. And also your guests probably won't share it because it doesn't fit what they're doing or they already have too much crap going out, right? So stop the noise. Avoid it. Do only what works. The bare minimum that you have to do to support the person that you say, that avatar, going back to that, that you serve. That's my bonus here. Next thing is to stop using forms. If we're honest here, I know everyone here is probably going to say, yeah, I use a, a guest form. You probably don't. You think you do because it gives you all this data points, but I bet you don't really use it. As a matter of fact, most people I talk to, it's one of the main points I ask. I'm like, hey, so you use a guest form. Can you show me how to use it? Oh, well, it puts everything here for me. I'm like, well, what do you do with that? Oh, it's just, well, it's there so I can see it and I can grab it if I need it. You don't use it. <laughs> I used to do one. I, I don't even know where it is. It's probably somewhere. It has hundreds of people's emails and all their information on it. And I don't touch it. None of us do. The truth is you're wasting your time, but even more than that, you're pu instantly putting a bad taste in the mouth, uh, mouth of your guest. Here's an example. Uh, in the chat, can somebody tell me who your absolute ideal guest would be? Like, I know I just said, let's not do those two topics, but who is like a dream guest of yours? Somebody drop it in there in the chat. Let's see what we got. Nobody has a dream guest. All right. Barbara Corrigan. She's like, yeah, okay, Barbara Corrigan. Oh, let's do Oprah. That's a great one. If Oprah agreed to be on your podcast, is the next thing you do say, cool, fill out this guest form? Absolutely not. You would never consider doing that. She would say, cool, you're not serious. I'm out of here. Why do we treat anyone else different? If we say all people are created equal, which is something I believe, why do you have a normal person fill out a form but that you wouldn't have Oprah fill out? You're wasting your time even more. You're wasting their time and putting a bad perspective immediately. Stop the forms. You're wasting your time. All right. Next one is automations. I, I believe in automate, delegate, eliminate. That is my life. That's how I can do what a lot of it would take usually a staff of people to do. I believe in it. But I also believe in not automating for the sake of automating. Do not automate for the sake of automating. And what I mean by that is there's so many fancy auto automation tools, AIs, all this. So we do it because it exists. But here's what, what the truth of automation Automation is only saying, I don't want this problem anymore, but I'm willing to take on this one instead. Automation just gives you something else to do later. And a lot of these project management softwares, nothing against them. They've worked hard to build these things. You're spending more time fixing broken automations because every day a connection breaks. You're spending more time than value that it actually has. And on top of that, when I ask people that are really having automation, they don't even know how anything works. They've automated it to the point where they're now just like managing it and they're like, oh, I don't actually even know what this does or why I do it. Even the, the, the professional people that are like, we're going to help you with automations. It really is a waste of time. Just do it manually. Because again, all you're doing by automating is saying, I don't want this problem, but I'll take another one down the road. And typically the one down the road is more work and more serious. Just use something that's really simple. I, I am going to put another one of my tools up here. It's Podmatch's birthday, but I'm not talking about Podmatch yet. I'll have that one up there too. Podcast SOP, if you're not using project management software at all, Podcast SOP, in my mind, is the, the best software out there. Like it, it, We built it. There's no automations. There is no workflows. There's nothing other than simply a glorified checklist that you build with instructions and ways to comment and exchange files. Zero plugins, nothing fancy, because again, that stuff is just there to make noise. It doesn't really work. And some people will, now I know it will happen. After this, people will send me videos of what they do. And then they're going to show me, well, this one's kind of broken, and we're not really using this right now. And, well, I have a team member who's supposed to be doing this, but they're not hired yet. And, uh, well, this over here, we're not actually sure why we have this. Even the top-level professionals have no clue what they're doing with that stuff. So, again, to save time here, and this was that third one, stop the noise. Stop sharing so much content. Stop using forms. And stop with all the automations. Keep it as simple as you possibly can, because that will cause you to podcast long-term much better than you can if you're doing all the things. All the best podcasters I know – don't use any of those things, even the really big ones. Like they just said, oh, the simplest problem for me to have is to ask you a question real quick, right? And that's also the most complex problem because I don't have any fancy things, right? People just don't do it that actually know what they're doing. So for us, we can't fall into this trap of shiny objects and thinking we need all the things, right? Okay, number five. Sorry, this is like, I, again, I come from love. I am trying to help and serve here today. And I know I'm sharing a hard message that many, many people will not agree with. But I'm telling you, I don't know if they have as many podcast episodes as I do. Never missed an episode in five years or something like that. Like, 
I have a free life. I have, I don't, I don't work after six 30. Don't work on the weekends. Like, I don't know if they can't show you that maybe, maybe their advice isn't that great. Right. All right. Number five, streamline all communication to a single place, streamline all communication to a single place. All right. I love this. This is a good one right now because podcast guesting is getting so popular. People are reaching out in every single social platform possible. It's even like the internet is requiring you to build more just to respond to their messages, right? Like, oh, I don't want TikTok, but I'm being forced there because I got to respond to these messages, right? Uh, I'm obviously joking. But we've got DMs from everywhere. We've got emails from like our old email address we haven't used in 10 years. People are pitching to be a guest on your podcast, right? Like it's coming from everywhere. The best thing you can do is pick a single place to communicate and only respond there. This is going to be the best thing you can do. Now, personally, I'm going to, going to share now. And, you know, I'm not really like one to self-promote, but I'm sharing Podmatch. This is his birthday. Come on, three years, everybody. What's up? Okay. I like Podmatch to be that place. The main reason being is all their details are there. I'm telling you right now, we, we did all, like, all the research. On average, if you don't use Podmatch, you're going to exchange 14 emails back and forth with each guest, and it's going to take you three additional hours. Podmatch has everything on their one sheet. You can only message. You don't even have to exchange an email address. It's going to save you three hours and on average 14 emails. I like that to be the place I send everybody. So what I do is I just developed multiple, I use text expander, which is you type in a little code and it spits out a blurb of text. Alicia and I have three of these. And anybody who reaches out to be a guest on my podcast, anywhere other than Podmatch is getting funneled into Podmatch. So let me go ahead and drop these in the chat. It's going to be a lot. And anybody who's watching a replay, you can get them as well. I don't, you know what? I'm going to have to send them afterwards because it's not going to let me actually do that, is it? Um, yeah, anyway. Okay, text expander is great. Yes, it literally looks like little codes. I can't send it in the chat, but I'll make sure I get it to anyone who wants afterwards. These are my templates. I don't look at it. Alicia does or another team member does. If anyone reaches out, I don't care if it's the President of the United States. I'm going to tell them, you can join Podmatch and you can message me there if you want to be on my podcast. Remember, you have all the value. They need you. You don't need them. Remember that. That is wherever there's more people is where the value, or wherever there's less people is where the value is. There are less podcast hosts than guests. Therefore, the value is with the host. You're the one of the audience. You're the gatekeeper. They can meet on your turf on your terms. So again, you're required to. I'm not going to even read anything about it. You are going to get one of these three responses. The nice thing is if you are on Podmatch, that's an affiliate link. So I, I mentioned earlier, just by doing this one tactic, I sent this to, to um, uh, traditional booking agencies, individuals, companies, anybody, anyone who reaches out. We have three different options. They get one of them, and it sends them our Podmatch affiliate link. It says you can join. You can message us there if you want to. And that has brought me in three years. to. I'm, I'm not quite there. I'm like a few dollars off. I'm almost exactly $36,000 of commissions earned just through that which is I'll obviously never have the company pay it out because right, it's my company, but it's pretty good, $12,000 a year just by making my life easier. That right there is a win, right? So again, these are my main points here. and I've got one more I'm going to share, which might be the most impactful for many people. So again, these are six steps for finding your next ideal podcast guest without wasting time. Number one, design a listener transformation journey. Number two, create and maintain an episode topic list, not names. Number three, get smarter about finding ideal guests. I talk about all the things that you might be, make you a bad podcast guest. So look for those and avoid them. Uh, number four, stop the noise. Don't use forms. Don't use automation. Stop with the drip content. Only do what works and keep it as simple as you possibly can. Number five is to streamline all communication to a single place. Again, my suggestion being Podmatch, but find what works for you. If that doesn't work for you, please don't use it. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to share here, and this one's really important, we'll end with this, is to stay true to the journey. Trust yourself. I'm going to get much calmer here, all right? Stay true to the journey. Trust yourself. Now, here's the thing. You got to go with your gut. All of us sometimes have this bad feeling about a guest or about the direction of stuff with listeners, right? Like, that, that comes in. You've got to trust it. And the, the truth of the matter is not everyone is going to be a right fit for your show. As a matter of fact, hopefully most people aren't a fit for your show. Hopefully it's just a small group, a, a niche group of people that really serve your avatar, so you've got to be willing to say no. I'm going to repeat that again. You have to be willing to say no. And for many of us, myself included, that is the hardest thing in the world to do. Does anyone else here struggle with saying no? I mean, that's tough because you're like, man, I'm letting this person down. And like, they're not going to like me. They're going to get angry. I legitimately feel that way every time I do it. But here's the thing. You're the gatekeeper of your listeners' ears. You are the gatekeeper. It's, it's a big responsibility if you think about it. Imagine yourself on a physical stage. You're the moderator of that event, or you're the, the organizer of that event, and there's hundreds of people sitting in chairs, or let's just say 20 people sitting in chairs, and your job is to bring up the right speakers. 
man, you don't want to let them down. You don't want to bring up the wrong person. And everyone wants to be on that stage, right? Everyone's after the stage, all of us, right? Your job is to say, you know what? I don't think you're the right fit for the people in this room. That's hard to say, but you owe it to your audience to be able to, to say no when it makes sense. And here's the thing. You're not responsible for the, feeling, the feelings of your potential guest. You're not responsible for their feelings, but you're accountable to your listeners. That's who you owe. That, that's why you got into this, right? And so you have to do right by them. If you do right by them, they're going to be loyal to your show and help you grow. But if you just start giving the stage, quote unquote, right, to anybody who comes in, man, like, it's, it's just not going to work, right? It's not going to work long term. And you're going to know that. Again, going back to your gut, you're going to be like, man, I, I know I'm not doing the right thing with this. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't seem right. Those are the things that you might start saying as a result. And so, again, you've got to trust yourself. It, it, it's stay true to the journey that you're taking people on. So again, when I say stay true to the journey, I mean the journey that you're taking your listeners on and know that there's gonna be times where I have to be willing to get uncomfortable and say no. And to me, that takes courage. And, and I've used this quote before, but man, courage means being afraid than doing what you have to do anyway. Sometimes you just have to do it. And again, if you really care about the responsibility you have to your listeners, you're gonna tell the wrong people no and the right people yes. And you're going to do your best to streamline this to make sure that you make it as a podcaster. Again, today, the stats show that there's just over an 87% chance that you're not going to make it. The way you prove it wrong is by focusing on these big things, like making sure that you understand how to get your ideal guest in the fastest way possible. That way, you're not going to fail, right? Again, if we're here for our listeners to impact their lives, to make something about their life better or more enjoyable, then we have to be willing to say no. We have to trust ourselves as that host. Because guess what? Listeners didn't start listening because they don't trust you. They start listening because they trust you, not because they don't, but because they do. And they have an expectation of what you're going to provide to them. And yeah, that puts a lot of pressure on us, right? But guess what? That's something that is a gift that each and every one of us have. The fact that anyone's listening to our shows, even if it's 10 people, again, podcasts are the same as, as butts sitting in seats. So at a conference, people sitting down in seats, you on stage, they're there by choice. They want to hear you. That is huge. With great power comes great responsibility. I just made that up, just so you all know. Um, <laughs> I, I know what it's from. But for real, with great power comes great responsibility. Our responsibility is to be that gatekeeper, to say no, to find ways to make the process quicker. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and discredit everything I've said here today. Don't listen to me. I, I don't know what works for you. For you, it could be totally different. You have to find what works for you. I'm telling you the best of what I've learned that has worked for me, and my prayer and hope today is that one thing I said will inspire you and help you be able to, to, to take it, run with it, right, and to do better. So, guys, that's all I've got here today. Uh, I'm really thankful for everyone being here, and uh, again, at the end of the day, I think that as long as we maintain this, this attitude and mindset of we're here to serve, not to be served— Man, I, I, as a follower of Jesus, like that, that, that was like Jesus' model, right? Like, I'm here to serve, not to be served. I'm here to love. If we can have the mentality of we're here to love and serve people, this is going to go really far. The best days of your podcast are still ahead of you. I think they're actually just getting started. If you can keep that mentality, I'm here to love and serve the people that are trusting me and listening. So again, everybody, I thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'll have the resources if anyone needs them or anything like that. But I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, and we'll do a quick q and I think we have a few minutes here. So thanks again, everybody. I appreciate you.